Hey guys, it is Jordy from Seven Eagle Group. I am so excited today. I have an awesome guest and I can't wait to uh, for him to share some of the advice and guidance that he has for you. Is, uh, this, uh, this guest today has uh, served our country um, for numerous years and now is getting ready to transition to the civilian world. And um, you know, every now and then I come across uh, uh, service members who I feel are just going about their transition in the right way. They're doing everything correctly. They're organized. They're um, they're networking. They're um, just very um, uh, very structured with the way they're going about their plan. And today I want to introduce Stephen Clary from the U.S. Army. Uh, all the way from Germany. So, Stephen, thank you for being with us. I appreciate it. Good morning, Jordy and uh, guests and everybody. I'm, you know, absolutely uh, happy and glad to be here. So, uh, thanks so much. Awesome, it's awesome, and thank you. I know it's. Uh, I think it's late there, right? You're in. You're overseas, no, so it's actually it's actually one o'clock. So one o'clock. It's, uh, it's okay. like right in the middle. Good. You're catching okay, me good. in my prime, man. Well, thank you. Thank you for jumping on. I appreciate it. Do you mind? Um, I feel you have some really great lessons to share about your experiences, you know, the, the ups and the downs of what you've been going through. And I want to get to all those. But let's start with what got you into the Army? Why did you decide to choose this path when you were when in high school? And what was that like for you? Yeah, I think for a lot of people, uh, uh, there are young men and women, they're, they're looking to gain certain experiences, see the world, uh, serve something that is above themselves. And uh, I think that is definitely something that resonated with me as far as uh, going into the Army, living the Army values, uh, serving the country, serving a higher purpose. And so I think that there is a, whether it's a 90% of the reason or 0.1%, I think that resonates with a lot of our veterans. But who did someone influence you? That's pretty profound to be thinking like that when you're 16, 17 years old. Are you, could you come from a military family? Or? I actually did not come from a military family. No, my, my folks were both uh, in the business world, very successful. Uh, but one thing that they taught me is that it's very important to be passionate about uh, what you're what you're doing for a living or what you're doing as a volunteer. And so I think that uh, that really left an impression on me. And I, I carried that. Uh, I, I could have taken that a number of, of, of angles or a number of uh, avenues. But I think, you know, I selected the army as a way to carry that out. Hmm. Very cool. That's awesome. You got some some bright parents. That's that's great. Um, what you know, as you get ready for this next chapter and you're looking back on your your career, 10, 10 plus years has it been? Did I do my math right? It's, it's so, about 10 years. Yeah. 10 years. OK. What what are some of the best lessons that you feel you learned while serving? What are the things you feel that are going to help you the most? in this next uh in this next phase in your life well if you'll allow me I'll, I'll speak for myself but also maybe generalize it just a little bit for veterans and and because i know we, we're going to have a veteran audience whether it's somebody who does three years as a private and gets out as a as an e5 or someone who's an officer and does even more time uh i think that employers look at veterans as uh, people who have a, a work ethic, they're, they're able to show up on time. There's that, that old saying of, uh, you know, show up on time, right, right uniform, right place, ready to roll. And uh, I, I think that alone is, is that like foundational thing that really is gonna give veterans an edge. Yeah, that's awesome. And, Talk a little bit about what what are some of the things that you're doing in the military and and how has that influenced the path that you want to go on next for your career? A, a big part of my of my military background, you know, some of it was a combatant role, but you know, later on, it, I went into 
uh, serving as a military chaplain. And with that, you know, there is a a lot of hats that come with that. There's a uh, providing religious support. There's providing a variety of mental health and uh, spiritual health resources, uh, helping people get back in the fight. And but then there's also this component of trying to uh, look at the human component, right? The human service component, the human resource component, and getting into uh, you know, there's there's an issue with morale. There's an issue with uh, people, diff- you know, having difficulties, finding difficulties with uh, uh, their family, the deployment, the training, the cycle, all that stuff. And and so I, I'm trying to find that like one percent of something that we can actually influence and adjust and tweak from a command perspective to. Uh, invest in the uh, the human population, the, the, our, our soldiers and uh, our families, and uh, often in a joint capacity that that expands beyond that. So uh, you know, I'm now taking that and uh, uh, kind of hanging my hat on that one aspect of what I used to do. And uh, you know, in sales, a lot of sales is just listening, being curious, asking the right questions, and uh, and trying to find a couple solutions to those the, those problems to help that business be more efficient, effective, and uh, go on to the next level. So it brings me to my next point, which I believe you want to head down the path of uh, uh, being a business development rep or sales rep in the technology industry. Um, and what what? What did, what inspired that in you? And why do you want, why are you going that way? Uh, two, two parts to that question. And, and like you said, that's a perfect bridge. Uh, I think that from a sales perspective, uh, you know, listening and assessing uh, situations and uh, asking the right questions and then coming in with solutions that, uh, from a personality standpoint, from an experience standpoint, I, I really check a lot of those boxes. It, it inspires me. I'm passionate about it. I love helping people and uh, influencing people to be better. That That is what really drives me. So that's the motivational side of it. Mm-hmm. But when it, when it comes into the technology sector, whether it's healthcare or IT, uh, that we have all these these technologies and i did this in an interview recently uh i held up my uh my iphone and uh so everybody can see this right just just take a look at our phones you know 15 years ago uh, uh the the single digit 2000s before you know the, the, this was developed that this was just an idea right and people came together they developed this specific technology that has changed lives changed the world and uh you know that is very very exciting and uh you know i think it's really great to be able to create different things i'm not really going to be the creator of the stuff but i can definitely argue hey this is going to change your life it's going to change your business and this is why you need to get on board right now yeah so I think you have a lot of really good um, lesson stories, like examples of, of what you've gone through over the, uh, I don't know when you started planning for your transition. I would imagine it's been at least three months. Um, talk a little bit about some of the, the initial steps you took, maybe some of the challenges that you faced along the way. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, You know, when it comes to our transitioning veterans, whatever branch you're in, I, uh, I would definitely say start early. Now, I can't speak for for everybody. I know for the Army component, they allow you uh, the transition assistance program tap allows you to uh, begin your transition 18 months out. So let's say I have about 18 months left on my enlistment and I decide, okay, I'm probably going to go ahead and get out. You want to jump on that right away. Uh, You can sign up with them. It doesn't take long. Uh, They're going to give you a list of classes and courses you're going to need to do. Uh, 
but my my advice to young veterans who are going to go ahead and transition, do it early. Uh, actually invest in your transition. And that means go to the classes, pay attention, be involved. Uh, you're going to learn things. You know, I, I have a little more experience than s some other people, but I still went to those transition classes and tried to find, hey, there's got to be one one lesson learned. You know, one, one little lesson, one little uh, thing that is going to make my life uh, better and help me uh, transition more effectively. Uh, and then after that, there's a lot of other resources. I mean, there's so many out there. Seven Eagle Group is one of those. Uh, and uh, I think you need to kind of look at all these different resources and figure out what is going to help you out and uh, take advantage of those. It, it, they're they're life-changing. Yeah. Talk about um, LinkedIn. I know you're active on LinkedIn. You're a extremely st strong, I would call you like a strong communicator, strong networker. Talk about some of your favorite tips that you would have for others. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really appreciate that question. Uh, so uh, let, me, let me build a bridge onto that real quick. As you do your transition classes and you look at a variety of resources, you, you may figure out, okay, I want to do this educational program or I want to do this type of job. Or I'm going to do a credentialing thing to get me from point A to point B to this job. You're going to need to do your own research, figure all that out, and then go after it. But when you get to the point of, I am going in this industry to do this type of job, whether it's, whether it's a technical thing or for me, like business development, you, you need to realize there are a lot of people out there who can advise you and coach you and, and connect you with a decision maker, somebody who might be a hiring manager. Uh, so what you want to do is get a uh, LinkedIn account, find somebody who knows what they're doing. They will help you get that account, uh, get you know the right profile and a picture and everything like that. Uh, and then once you have that, begin networking. And, and the way to do this is very simple. Uh, let's say uh, I, I'm, I'm going to use you, Jordy, as, as an example, if I may. I know this is a long answer. You just asked me to explain LinkedIn, and that's, that's a pretty big thing. Uh, so Jordy has partners with all these different technology leaders, in, in uh, whether it's IT, cyber, or healthcare or whatever. Uh, so I am going to find Jordy online. I'm also going to find a couple of your other associates and I'm going to go ahead and let's say take 10 of those, Jordy, Brenna, Derek, and I'm going to uh, reach out to them. I, I, I hit connect, hit a uh, message and I put in, hi, you know, the, I'm Steven, I'm a transitioning service member. I want to go into this industry. I love what you're doing with your, with, with your organization, Seven Eagle Group. Can we, stay in, can we stay in contact? Can we stay connected? I'm happy to send people your way, period. It's about three to five sentences. Send that out. If you do about 10 of those, uh, I, I'd say 10 or 20 of those a week, you're going to actually build up your network and you're going to start seeing very quickly on people's feed, oh, you know, Jordy's doing a live stream, Jordy's doing this, Jordy's doing that. And then you're going to see opportunities where you can get involved. Yeah. You know, it's interesting when you said that you sort of went through it fast, but I, I, I want to emphasize this. Um, you are not bashful at all about reaching out to people. And I think that's one of your best qualities. You're like, I'm going, I'm, I'm going out there, man. They're going to know my name um, during this process. And like you said, you reached out to multiple people just at Seven Eagle Group. And then what happens is all these other people on my team say, hey, who's this guy, Steven? He keeps, he wants to talk to me. He wants to chat with me. He wants to help me. Um, and in your message there, how you said, um, can we connect? I want to for, I want to recommend Seven Eagle Group to my buddies or whatever you said. That, I, I'll tell you why that's so powerful, receiving a message like that. It might not seem like much to you. It's like three, five sentences, whatever, you send it off. But for the recipient, he 
did the exact opposite what everyone else does. Everyone else sends a message that will say, uh, hi, I'm transitioning out. Do you have a job for me? Right. Here's my resume. And it's almost like they're jumping the gun a little bit where you're taking baby steps. Obviously, it's very clear to me you're going to be looking for a job, but you did it in a very professional way. And talk a little bit about that. Why you why you did that? Uh, absolutely. So uh, one thing and, and this is now this is debatable amongst uh, business experts and, and, you know, and so forth. But uh, fr from a sales perspective, OK, from a sales perspective. You, you can use LinkedIn and other platforms as a, uh, as, as a way to reach out and so forth. But you, you need to figure out, okay, hey, what am I trying to do here? And really, LinkedIn is best used as a, uh, a way to connect, a way to stay linked with somebody, LinkedIn, right? And so what, what you're doing is you're just trying to make the connection. So I'm not trying to get a job or make a sale. I'm trying to build a connection. So that's the first thing. And, and then the second thing is, and, and you know, I guess that's the, uh, the hook and, uh, the, the thing like it, it's, there's this thing called uh, W I I M what's in it for me. What's in it for me. When you reach out to a uh, business person or somebody you want to stay in contact with, you got to express to them what is in it for them. And, you know, like in this example with a headhunter recruiter, uh, veteran friendly partnered firm. Okay. Well, Hey, I can provide this. Uh, and, and that's going to be different for you, Jordy, you know, at seven Eagle group, than it will be if I reach out to a major company, like let's say Johnson and Johnson, you know, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say maybe something a little bit different, uh, you know, but ultimately, the goal is to build a connection and, and to have a, a reasonable relationship uh, of just like the, hey, we'll send some stuff back and forth. Maybe you send something to me, I send something to you. Uh, but I do want to circle back around uh, real quickly to what you said about bashful. I, I know that there are a lot of people out there, maybe a little more introverted. They're uh, looking to go into some sort of like IT uh, thing where like they're going to be a programmer and so they're not as excited about hitting somebody up my my um my i mean and i'm going to pound the table on this one for all our young veterans who are getting out it, you are willing to charge a foxhole with a gun okay you're able to do that <laughs> you can you do have the courage within yourself to send somebody a note on linkedin of like hey can we just stay connected the worst thing they're going to do is not respond to you. That's the worst thing that's going to happen. And you're going to have to send out maybe 10 or 20 to get five. And that's okay. But, but please, you know, you're, dig in, dig deep into your soul and, and go after it. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's so few people do that. I've been doing this a long time and very few people reach out like that when they do. I feel they do it wrong because they're jumping the gun. They're saying, here's my resume. Do you have a job for me? And they're not building that relationship the way you do. And you, you not only um, offer value to the recipient, to me, with that little note, so we connect back, but then you take it a step further and you say, let's jump on a call which I love. And you, you've, I, I don't know how many people have you spoken with in, in our company? <laughs> Me probably like four times, right? Brent. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Derek, Jack Sterling. I mean, so you're, you're, you're um, making yourself present to everybody. You're top of mind now when our team talks about, you know, Hey, who are some of the, you know, we call them five-star transitioning guy, you know, you're, you're at the top of that list. And I'm sure there are people out there who are a lot, maybe a lot smarter, better educated than you, but they're invisible to us because we they're not on our radar. You're on our radar. And so kudos to you for that, that um, charge in the foxhole attitude. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, let's talk uh, last section because this has been such, such great advice. Um, 
I assume you've you've had some interview settings already. Talk about some of your um, favorite tips, some of your favorite pitfalls for people to consider when they're in that uh, interview environment. Okay, absolutely, Jordy. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a, a hair step back, just one step back. Uh, one thing I would tell every single veteran as they are transitioning is you need to get a – uh, a, a job performance coach in the industry or world that you're going into. So let's say you want to be a computer programmer doing stuff with uh, cyber and also AI. All right. So that, that's what you're going to go into. you got to find a guy uh, who has done that, who understands the industry, understands the things to do, and they – they're going to coach you like, hey, you need to do this certification. You need to do Securities Plus. You need to, um, you know, learn a little bit about Python. That's really important. And, uh, you know, they, they're they going to take a look at your resume and say, hey, like, you know, you need to change this up, change this up. Uh, and, and, and then they can even coach you on those interviewing skills. So I think the best thing that I could tell everybody, you know, let, let's, let's go across the board here. You know, all, all our great sports heroes, right? Uh, whether it's LeBron James, Tiger Woods, whomever, they have coaches. They don't, you know, they, they work really, really hard, but they also have somebody who cannot perform as well as they can watch them shoot, shoot a basket, hit a golf ball, whatever it is. So get a coach, get a coach, get a coach. That's the first thing. Um, when, when you get into the interview, one thing that's really important is the uh, uh, the star format, and I think that uh, you can utilize that at some level uh, with your resume bullets. But the star format is essentially like uh, you know, let let's say Jordy and I are interviewing, and uh, you know, you say to me, uh, you know, Stephen, tell me about a time where you had to like solve a problem amongst people. And I'll be like, oh, I really appreciate that. You know, there was a situation, uh, this happened very often, where you might have one uh, manager struggling with a sub, you know, a, a, an employee who's, uh, you know, on staff. And uh, there's just a conflict. And uh, so I recommended that we sit down and talk it out. This is what we did. And then... Um, we came up with a couple ways forward. They agreed on it, and then the result was that that team was more efficient. Uh, sorry, more uh, effective, efficient. Uh, you know, and I can say that in about you know, you just heard me answer that like in about what thirty seconds, uh, just on on that part, right? On this long winded uh, answer for how to interview, but get get a few of those things out. List them out. You know, here's the question I'm going to be. Uh, I should be expecting an employer to say, hey, how did you solve a problem? How did you overcome adversity? How did you uh, tell me about a success? Tell me about a failure. And then put out, you know, put in the star format under each of those questions, rehearse them, rehearse them, rehearse them, and then utilize those when you're actually talking. Yeah, that's good. Because you, you, you there are only so many questions you're going to get asked in an interview and, and you can pretty much guess probably 90% of the ones. So there's no, there's no excuse for showing up unprepared. Just think through your answers before, and then you'll show up to the interview with a lot more confidence. Um, Steven, this was awesome. I cannot thank you enough for doing this, for uh, offering your brothers and sisters such great advice. Would it be okay if people connect with you on LinkedIn? Because I know you are a big believer in paying it forward. <laughs> Absolutely. If and if anybody has a question, just reach out to me on LinkedIn. We'll we'll put my uh, profile uh, link icon in there, and uh, I'm happy to have a conversation either over. Uh, uh, social media, if that's most comfortable for you. But also, I have both a uh, European and an American line. So uh, <laughs> I'm available to talk to anybody and uh, help you guys uh, achieve all your dreams. Yeah, take him up on this. Get a mentor. He could be your first one. And I guarantee you, he will put you in a much better place than where you are now, at least on the job job search front. So it's a, it's a confusing and often very uh, 
stress-filled process. So take advantage of, uh, of guys like Stephen who are out there willing to help you. Stephen, thanks again, man. I wish you nothing but the success in your career. I cannot wait to see all the incredible things that uh, you are going to accomplish. So thanks. Thanks for taking time today. Uh, thanks, Jordy. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.